Hello and welcome to the calculator guy video on solving equations on a Casio FX CG50 in Run Matrix. We're going to look at a variety of different examples using the solve features that are available on the Casio CG50's Run Matrix mode. It's just worth mentioning before we start that there is a dedicated solver which is located in the equation mode from the menu, which we'll have a look at in a subsequent video. But in this video, we're going to focus on the solve features that are available within the run matrix mode. It's also worth noting that some of the examples here are relatively straightforward. We could probably do them with or without a calculator, but they are just to demonstrate the features of the calculator using some more straightforward examples. So let's have a look at the first one. So we need to solve seven and then we've got brackets, parentheses, X plus nine equals two. And then we have 15 minus two X in another set of brackets. So from the menu, we're going to go into run matrix and then we're going to press uh, option. And then from there, we're going to choose F4 calc. And you can see we've got two features here that have solve involved with them. So solve and solve N. Now solve N is the easiest one to use because you don't have to define a starting value an initial value or a range with which to try and solve the function you can just input your function of x and it is important that we are going to use x in all of these examples for the solver so if we have a different letter we just need to use x as a substitute value for that let's input our equation then uh, it's worth noting that the first bracket that opens up here is blue so therefore you may you need to make sure that your closing bracket is blue as well to make sure that we've got everything included within the solve function as i'm inputting in here the second inner bracket there is red colored just to differentiate it from that that's sort of embracing the solve feature final bracket here when i've inputted it is blue that means we've got all the values within the solve function and then if we press execute you can see we have a warning here that says more solutions may exist we're only going to get one solution as a result of this basically the calculator is just covering itself here that it's going to find the solution i believe closest to zero comment below if you know any different obviously with some functions that we try and solve there are other solutions that might exist in this case there isn't there's only one solution but the calculator is just letting us know it is just solving and finding one solution here so let's just press exit and you can see that we've got our solution here within the funny shape brackets we've got minus three negative three as a result let's have a look in a little bit more detail then at the solve feature option f1 will return to solve n for some later ones for its simplicity let's have a look at solve we'll have a look at the second example and we'll press solve first it's opened up the blue brackets again and we're going to input this example x plus 3 over 3 minus x minus 5 over 2 equals 16 minus x i've just sped the video up slightly there you just need to make sure you take your time and input it accurately when we've inputted that what we need to do is to add a comma and we need to define an initial value that the calculator can use to solve from now with this particular example again there's only one solution to this and if you're not sure where to start then the simplest value to go for is zero so if we put zero in in as our value and then close the bracket and then execute then it's found our solution here which is 15. essentially it's found the closest solution to zero which is 15 but it is the only solution for this example also notice that we didn't get that warning message there, did we? Because this is the, the solution that is closest to zero, so there's only one of those. Now, let's just exploit this idea that we can have different starting values and we can even set limits as well. And I'll show you how that works with this example. So it's x squared plus 6 equals 15. Again, we're using a very simple example here. You can solve this by hand or relatively easily. We know that the solutions to that are going to be plus and minus three, positive and negative three. If we square either of those, we get nine plus six is 15. So let's see how we could obtain those if we weren't sure, or if we had a more complicated example, let's just see how this works. So solve x squared plus six equals 15. We'll add a comma. We'll make a starting value zero, and we won't define any limits. Close the bracket and execute now it's gone for three here what we've got to think is three and negative three are equidistant from zero so it's gone for the positive solution there so how would we get the calculator to give us the negative one well, what we can do is we can define a lower and an upper bound to solve this particular function so if we add another comma and then we say let's add a lower limit of negative 10 
comma, and then an upper limit of zero. If we press execute, then we get negative three. The calculator solved that for a starting value of zero, but looking between the limits of negative 10 and zero to find our solution. Well, there's only negative three in that region that satisfies that. And we can also, if we wanted to find the positive solution using this method, let's define a lower limit of zero and an upper limit of say five. We've got our function of x, which is what is written in the brackets first, comma, then our initial starting value, comma, a lower limit, comma, and then our upper limit, and then we've closed the brackets. Press execute, and we've got three as our solution. So that's the only solution that falls between zero and five. Incidentally, another way of finding those solutions, again, just working with this same example, is choose a different initial starting value and not necessarily set the limits see if we can find the solutions closest to those initial values so if i delete those off and set our initial value as negative two press execute you can see it's negative three that we've got as our closest solution to negative two let's change that to five you can see we've got positive three as our closest solution to that so we can sort of have a little guess uh, at approximately where we want our solution to be and the calculator will zoom in on the closest solution to that now this really is an advantage if we want to explore trigonometric functions where there might be different solutions depending on the domain of x or the values that x can take in this example we're given that sine x equals square root 2 over 2 and we've got to find in degrees the closest value of x 2 and then we've got four different examples here 0 360 540 and negative 180 and there is also going to be another one that I'm going to explore uh, after that as well. Again, exploring what happens when we're equidistant between two solutions. So first job here is to change the angle of the calculator into degrees. We're currently in radians. So that is a shift and then set up down to angle and F14 degrees. So we've got degrees at the top here. Solve again. Let's input our function sine x equals square root 2 over 2 comma okay so we want the solution closest to zero so zero close bracket press execute and here we have the solution that is closest to zero which is 45 so 45 degrees that is fairly straightforward let's go back using the up key alter that initial value to 360 press execute and we can see that we've got our closest value there of 405 degrees back up let's change this to 540 you can see that's 495 slightly different from the previous two because this nearest value is lower than the starting value that we inputted and let's try that again so the last one here is negative 180 execute and we've got negative 225 uh, so just as another little example as well while we're exploring this feature on the calculator is what happens if you put in 90 so 90 is equidistant actually from two solutions to this so if we press execute, you can see that we have 45, again, which was the nearest solution to zero. So we know that as that solution is between zero and 90, but there's actually another solution that is the same distance away from 90 degrees. Now, perhaps we need to just input the lower and upper limits here. So let's have a lower limit of 90 and an upper limit of 180. You can see that we've got another solution there, 135. Again, that's plus 45 uh, away from 90 degrees and we've got our second solution that's close to 90. On to the next example now given that a equals 2 and then we've got an open set of brackets parentheses 6 plus 1.9 to the power of kt. When t equals 5 and a equals 222 find the value of k to two decimal places and we're going to switch back to solve n for simplicity in this example. So it's solve n and the brackets will open. Now we know a equals 222 in this example, equals and then two open brackets, six plus 1.9, and then we'll raise the power of, and then we're just going to substitute k for x and times five, t is five. Close brackets, close again, execute, just the warning again that more solutions may exist we'll exit out of that and here we have the solution so we're giving that to two decimal places that's 1.45 
And the final example here is solving a logarithmic equation. We have log with a base of 8x minus log base 8 of x minus 2 and that equals one third. So once again, for simplicity, we're going to use solve n here. And if we want to access the log, what we need to do is press F6 to the next part of this menu. We can see log AB there. If we press F4, and then we can type in log base eight, X, navigate right, minus, log again, base eight, X minus two, navigate right, equals, and then one third. Close the blue bracket once again, execute, just the warning of more solutions, exit, and there we have our solution. So four would fit that in there. There we go, how we can use the solve features that are in the run matrix mode to be able to solve a variety of different equations that we may be asked to. And in a future video, we'll also have a look at the solver, which is within the equation mode. Uh, on the FXCG50. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.